Good morning, Wendell United Methodist Church. Welcome to worship today. Boy, it makes my heart sing to see a full house today. So glad to see you. My name is Wallace. I serve as your pastor here in this place. Welcome to worship. Whether this is your uh, first time visiting, welcome. We're glad that you're here. Or whether this is your first time back after a COVID hiatus, welcome. We're glad you come back. Or, or maybe you've been steadfast locked in the whole time. Glad to have you. Uh, for those of you worshiping with us online, we're glad to have you in worship in this way. Uh, please know that there's still uh, seats left, we, uh, and as we continue to grow, we'll add another service so that we can keep uh, separated and comfortable. Uh, if you're worshiping online, you can download your worship guide from windellumc.org. A few announcements for the day. Our flowers on the altar, kind of beautiful, uh, given in honor of... Uh, Don and Stephanie's uh, wedding anniversary, so we give God thanks for that. Uh, a couple of things to look forward to next, well, let me rephrase that, to, uh, to be sad about and look forward to. Uh, next week is Sarah's last Sunday with us. Uh, she'll be preaching her last Sunday, and following worship, we'll have a simple little lunch next door if you want to come and grab a hot dog, and uh, we'll have some sides, and maybe we'll have a, a cake with her name on it and everything, so we'll be... <laughs> Uh, I, I've thoroughly enjoyed working with Sarah. I know many of you have uh, engaged with her in various ways. She's been a, a delight and definitely a gift to our congregation this year. Uh, but before that, on this Friday night, we're having, uh, we never really gave it a name. I'm calling it a family fun night. Uh, this Friday at 6 o'clock, if you want to come hang out with us, we'll have some games for the kids. We've got free sunset slush. We might throw a movie on. It'll just be a fun, casual time to get together. Uh, if you have kids, come. If you don't have kids, please come. Uh, we look forward to having you anyway. Uh, and now a, a word of, we'll go ahead and get this out of the way, a word of a note from me. And, you know, when COVID started a, a while ago, I decided, and it took very uh, political size, I decided that I would not uh, speak out uh, because that's not my place but these days with the variant uh, very uncertain uh, and with the looming anticipation of what is to come with mask mandates and God forbid a, another shutdown, uh, it, I think it is my place uh, to, to plead with you uh, that if you have not been vaccinated, uh, please consider it, uh, please do it uh, for the safety of um, us gathered here, uh, for the safety of our uh, country, for the, for th if nothing else, so that we don't have to go back into this mess. Um, if you disagree with me, if you think I'm crazy or nuts, I'd love to talk with you. I'd be glad to. I've got a conversation set up uh, for this week with a uh, medical professional and a uh, pharmaceutical scientist professional to discuss and have a little symposium on the, the benefits, the safety, the appropriate nature of it. Uh, and, and just personally, you know, I, I, feel, I, I feel anger, I feel frustration uh, at the situation that it could all be preventable. Uh, so if you know people who have not been vaccinated, uh, if you'd be willing to share with them maybe your reasons, uh, I'd be very grateful. And we would not have to be in this place were it not for that. So, on a happier note, let us pray together a prayer of invocation. Almighty and eternal God, you do not desire the death of a sinner, but want all people to repent and live. Hear our prayers for those who do not know you. Turn their hearts from idols and empty things to the living and true God and gather them into your holy church for the glory of your name, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. This we pray, and amen. Church, let us worship today through music.
Church, now let us join together in our call to worship from 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Do you not know that in a race the runners all compete, but only one receives the prize? Run, Run in, in such, such a, a way, way that, that you, you may win, win it. it. Athletes exercise self-control in all things. They do it one. So I do not run aimlessly, nor do I box as though beating the air, but, but I, I punish, punish my body and enslave it, it so, so that, that after, after proclaiming to others, I myself should not be disqualified. As we continue in worship, might we sing a hymn of the faith? It'll be a hymn that you really want to belt out, but I respectfully invite you to hold your singing to whispers or hums or a song in your heart. Church, let us sing together. Formation of faith. This is the apostles of heaven, of heaven and, earth, and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Church, please be seated. As we come to a moment of prayer together, uh, we lift one another in prayer and excitement and joy and petition. And I would be happy to begin, and uh, if you have announcements you would like to uh, pray over, I'll open up. We want to continue to pray for Elaine Ray, who lost her sweet mama uh, last uh, Saturday. They celebrated her life on Saturday, and Elaine is, uh, she's, she's dealing with continued cancer treatments and lost her mom, and really uh, could... Is, uh, would appreciate a call or a card or, or whatever uh, would be comfortable for you. I know she'd love to hear from you. Uh, if you oh, Brian, you sitting in Danny and Marjorie's seat, buddy. <laughs> she is not going to be happy. Uh, da Danny went to the ER yesterday morning uh, about 8 o'clock and spent 12 hours in the ER. I went to see him, and they were just worn, slam out. He spent last night, he's got pneumonia in both lungs, uh, oh, no. and so they really appreciate your prayers. Mar Marjorie is worn, slam out. Her daughter is recovering from, from a pulmonary embolism, and now uh, Danny, and she, she's really stressed. Uh, I don't know if she she spent the night last night or, or not, but Danny is hoping to come home today. We'll we'll see about that. Uh, so pray for we'll pray for Danny. I uh, want to pray for John Cargill as he continues to recover. We want to pray for John Guins as he continues to govern, and we hope that we don't have to pray for John 
as you, it's a bad time to be named John, right? Uh, <laughs> Uh, John Guins, if you missed the email, had just very quickly developed some pain in his side. He went to the ER. Next thing he knows, he's diagnosed with cancer and under surgery and now looking into uh, chemo. They've been very optimistic, but so that's all I got. What's going on in your lives? <laughs> it's been a busy week. Anybody got something good to share? <laughs> go, go ahead, Steve. Yeah, we'll pray for, pray for Tom. Yeah, Brahma. Yeah, we're so proud of you, Brahma. That's awesome. Brahma is start, uh with college opening back up. She's starting her college at Wake Tech. That's wonderful. Yeah, what you got, Meg? Um, I got engaged yesterday. Oh! <laughs> Or is this like, do, we, do I need to step out? This is a bad time to, uh, not, <laughs> you look about three feet taller than you usually are. Oh, let me repeat that uh, for the camera. So Rob, Maggie got engaged. Praise God. That's awesome. Alan stood up and is not, that's not the first time he heard it, but we, we <laughs> want to pray for uh, Rob Lane, a local lawyer that um, is uh, struggling right now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I saw that. <laughs> yeah, th thanks, Alan. I saw that on Facebook this morning. Uh, the Camp Dogwood, which is a really fun-looking camp for the uh, vi visually impaired, uh, run by the Lions, was really hurt last. Year. Okay. Pretty fast. Now, Low Country Bull is that crawfish, or are we talking shrimp? Yeah, there you go. All right, all right. That's good. That's some good. Okay, okay. What what else is going on, friend? Yeah, James. No. Oh. No. Yeah. Gracious, yeah, we want to pray for Lori, who came home from vacation and uh, contracted the variant. No. No. Mary, Mary Jo? Sue Scott, Mary Jo's cousin who had a stroke. All right, their hands go, is this like a stall on the teacher so the lecture doesn't go too long? Is that what's <laughs> happening here? All right, Betty, go ahead. For Taylor and her family is going to college in two weeks to what university? Oh, <laughs> Rocky's over here covering his ears. It'll be good. It'll be good. Way to go, Taylor. We're so proud of you. That's awesome. All right, well, let's pray. If you have more, you can email me. <laughs> Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you so much for the gift of the day, for the gift of worship, for the joy, the, the unspeakable joy of being in worship together after so, so long. We pray your blessings over us that as we bring our worship to you, you might even come and walk and uh, speak and convict and lead among us, that we would experience a, a heavy dose of your Holy Spirit and leave full of joy. Uh, Lord, we thank you for it. Today, God, we pray for our world, for our country, for our, for our state, for our town, Lord, as the 
uh, as this COVID mess just continues uh, and we um, anxiously or at least watch what is to come and what will unfold over the next few months, we, Lord, we, we're just exhausted with it all. I pray that in Jesus' name that uh, something miraculous would break through, that we can come together as a country, as a town, that something as simple as protecting ourselves is not interpreted as a political agenda, uh, that we might be willing to uh, move forward in that way, that we can get over this uh, dark cloud that has been looming now for oh, a year and a half, Lord. We know that you are with us. We know that you celebrate with us when good things happen. We know that you're with us to give us a, a hug around the shoulders when things are bad. Today, Lord, we pray for Danny, for John Cargill, for John Guins, for Elaine Ray and her family, for Tom, for Lori and Sue. We pray for Rob. We lift up our that will continue in love. We praise you for what you're already doing through this uh, Camp Dogwood and uh, being a blessing to so many people. We praise you for simple things like rain to come, like sunshine right now, for family, for friends to sit on the pews with, for so many things. We'll offer our great Thanksgiving later, uh, but for now, might we mention in our hearts ways that we're so grateful, so blessed, so fortunate to be in this place right now. And until the day that we see it in its fruition, might we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, as we continue in worship, we'll be led in music uh, you'll recognize Sandy on the front row. Uh, she's brought a few friends, uh, her two daughters, and uh, a daughter-like friend, is that fair, uh, to lead us in worship. I've heard them practicing all morning. It is beautiful. So let us worship together.
Well, I'm sorry, friends. I don't know if it's going to get any better than that. Y'all can go on home. <laughs> the scripture today is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Uh, we're working our way back into tradition. I invite you to stand as we hear these words of New Testament resurrection that we as people who hold tight there in one voice our prayer for illumination. O oh God, you know us better than we know ourselves. As the scriptures are read, we will listen for your voice. By your spirit, lead us out of our fears and into the knowledge of your love. Through Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of our souls. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 50 through 80. Hear this word of the Lord. What am I saying, brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I'll tell you a mystery. We will not all die, but we will all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last perishability, this mortal body must be put on immortality when this perishable body puts on imperishability and this mortal body puts on immortality then the saying that is written will be fulfilled death has been swallowed up in victory where O death is your victory where death is your sting the sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law but thanks be to god thanks be to god who gives us the victory through our lord jesus christ therefore be steadfast immovable always excelling in the work of the lord because you know that the lord your labor is not in vain this church is our hope by which we cling and to which we hope. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. As you're seated, invite the kids to come on down for our children's sermon with Sarah. Hey, come on down. How are you? Good. Hey, how are you? You can sit down if you want. Hello, how are you? Um, it's so good to see all of you this morning. Wow, look at you, really paying attention. I have a few questions for you. Did you hear the word victory in the scripture today? Do you know what victory means? No idea? It's a big word, isn't it? All right, do you know what to win means? Yeah, what, what does it mean to win? Do you know? Victory. victory. There you go. All right, you've got it figured out. So like, let's think about the Olympics are going on right now. Do, have any of you seen any of the Olympics? There are some victories happening, some wins, you know? For the yeah, for the country. Yeah, it's not just for themselves, right? So we heard in the scripture today, thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Did you hear that line? Yeah, Jesus gives us victory. So Jesus' victory is not just for himself, right? Who's it for? All of us. All of us. You're right. It's for everybody. And it's for God. You're right. Yeah, exactly. And do you know what Jesus' victory means for us? It means he loves us. It means he loves us. You're right. Exactly. And it means he's with us always. It means God is with us now and forever. Do you know what forever means? It it means forever he loves us and and he will stay with us. It means forever he loves us and he'll stay with us. Do you know how long forever is? In the scripture when it says, thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ, after that it says, so we therefore should stand firm, we're immovable, we can be steadfast. So can we all stand up together? Show show me what it means to stand tall and stand firm, stand strong, do you know? All right, you're all standing pretty solidly, but like, give me like a, I'm firm, I'm grounded in God's love. Can you do that? 
Yeah, all right. That looks pretty good. Okay, dear God. Dear God. Thank you for giving us the victory. Thank you for giving us the victory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. So we can be with you. Now and forever. Now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you all so much. All right, are you ready to go? Go find Miss Fran. Thanks. I love to hear the little elephants run out. <laughs> well done, Sarah. That was your first children's sermon ever. <laughs> Welcome back uh, to our, our sermon series. We're calling Olympic Dreams. If you haven't noticed already, there's this sort of theme. Uh, thank you, Leanne, who played our Olympic fanfare. That makes my makes me so happy. Is uh, just to uh, experience that fun together. We're looking at Olympic dreams in uh, this sermon series. It, it's a light, fun, simple sort of sermon series where if you miss a few, you can come back and it'll still make sense. We're not really building on each other, but it, like, please come to every one of them. It'll be good to good to have you. We're looking forward to uh, working through some of this material together. Now, this week we're looking at what it means to finish the race and and for forever. Yeah, I've I've never I've, the, as I was studying this this week, I realized I've never preached a sermon on heaven. And for a pastor to say that, we're relatively young, I get that, but I've never preached a sermon on heaven other than funerals, of course. We uh, touch on that a little bit. You know, heaven heaven to me, I think I have focused it so much on the heaven on earth that we can experience. You know, if you look through, if you pay attention to any of my preaching, I focus a lot on the kingdom of heaven here and now. We can experience mission. We can experience Holy Spirit. We can experience drive that sends us out on mission. That makes sense. I grew up in a, a Baptist church that was really missionally driven. It was very, very much uh, what it meant to follow God was to go on mission. And then I was trained at a seminary that was very social justice bent. And so uh, social justice is sort of synonymous with the gospel message, you know, like feeding the sick and helping out the hungry, the other way around, and uh, giving the thirsty a drink and, it, you know, that scripture. Um, and, and so what I, what I realized recently, actually this week, uh, as a, we've been sort of developing this sermon series, is that I spend a lot of time looking at missions and evangelism and social justice and kingdom of God here and now to the detriment of what is to come. And after some conversations with many of you um, and knowing what's going on in your lives and your family's lives, uh, uh, this week has had a theme, a theme of heaven and hell and death and what is to come and clinging to hope and doubts. Uh, and so I figure it's a good, good time to lean into it, to preach this idea of kingdom of God to come. And yeah, the, I don't have it all figured out. You know, the, in the scripture we said that, uh, that Paul says, I tell you a mystery. Uh, it, it is a mystery. I don't pretend to have it all figured out. It's complex. It's convoluted. It doesn't make sense. It's uh, un, unlike any of our normal understandings of the way life runs. And so it's a growing edge for me. It likely is a growing edge for you. Uh, but that's the fun of this journey of faith. Right? We don't have to have it all figured out now, but as we walk with Jesus, we have years to work it through. You know, when I first went into the preaching business, I thought for sure I'd run out of things to preach on in like two years, and I'd start recycling sermons. But the more I get into it, the more I realize the depths and the amazing nature of God's word and God's love. Uh, and so this is one of them, the kingdom of heaven, not now, but to come. So Sunday school teacher asks the, her kids a few questions about how to get to heaven. She said, do you get to heaven by doing all good things? And the kids said, no. She said, do, do you get to heaven by memorizing the Apostles' Creed or the Lord's Prayer? And they said, no, of course not. 
said, do you get to heaven by listening to your mom and dad and, uh, and being good kids? I said, no, of course not. And then she asked again, and a little boy whose name will rename, remain nameless said, teacher, you got to die first. She said, how do you get to heaven? I said, well, you got to die first. You know, we as post-enlightenment, educated people, we have sort of a convoluted relationship with death and dying, don't we? I took an ethics course one year uh, by Dr. Alan Verhe. Uh, he was a brilliant scholar. He's one of my favorites. He always wore a tweed sports coat, and whenever he was outside, he always had a pipe in his mouth, even though that was not allowed on campus. It was just, it was okay. It was like this uh, modern Bonhoeffer or C.S. Lewis or somebody like that. He was my, like, I want to grow up and be like Dr. Verhe, but he taught a, taught a course on ethics, and you had one, one class that was fascinating. It was a course on death and dying, and he said, that, and the premise of it was that our entire lives are spent keeping us alive. Everything we do is spent keeping us alive. And so then when we approach this idea of moving on beyond keeping ourselves alive, it, 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 it is in stark contrast to everything that we have done our entire lives. Think about it. When you're born as a baby, your mom and dad take care of you. They keep you uh, safe and nurtured. You, you grow up and you, take your, you get your vaccines. When you get sick, you go to the doctor. You put your seatbelt on when you ride in the car. You do all of these safety things to keep yourselves alive. And when you get sick, later on, you go to the doctor and say, Doctor, what can I do to help myself get better? You take some medicine. You do physical therapy. You have surgery. And then you keep on your merry, merry way. And that works great. It works great until you get to this point of the end of life. And then suddenly all of life, the way you've approached life, doesn't make sense. Letting go doesn't make sense. It's difficult. It's tragic. It's hard. It's uh, painful. You see, I wonder, this is a big wonder for the day, I wonder if trying to stay alive is the same thing as living. I wonder if trying to stay alive is the same thing as living. I text Ashley most every day around lunchtime just to check in and see how she's doing. And usually she'll send me a message back, maybe a few pictures of what's going on. And then sometimes she sends me a message and says, simply, they are all alive, period. <laughs> and I know at that point that I uh, take my rear end home to help with lunch and nap uh, because life is not good. But like we, we de facto tend to move toward this staying alive, whether, whether it is eating or drinking or taking shelter or health care or safety, chemo, radiation, the trillion do- multi-trillion dollar industry that is our health care industry, this, this idea spent so focused on staying alive. I wonder if staying alive is the same thing as living. Some, something to ponder. Yeah, of course, the, maybe not for you, I think for most people, the scariest part of leaving this world is the unknown. You know, we have several people in our church right now who are dealing with loved ones who are anticipating the unknown, uh, whether it's cancer or hospice or surgery to come or Whatever it is, there are a lot of us experiencing the unknown in terms of understanding death. But not even just that, you know, finances, family stuff, COVID, we've got cancer treatment, surgery. The unknown is a terrifying place to be, and death, I think, is the ultimate unknown. It's easy to maneuver our way not long into a crisis of faith when we get too far down the road wondering what is this concept of death. Even I, I believe with all of my heart and my soul that, the, that heaven is God's ultimate plan and love lived out here on earth as a touch of heaven. But sometimes, even for me, uh, driving down the road or late at night, your mind wanders. You have this crisis of faith that says, is this all a, is this all a scam? Is this all just a joke? Is this real? It doesn't take long to wonder our way down through that. 
One of my lawyer friends, Alan, you make your money in uh, playing hypotheticals. And so I t my lawyer friend taught me that hypotheticals are a dangerous game to play. And I, I use that often in my uh, counseling. You know, as I, people, uh, we all tend to get off down a rabbit hole. This is going to happen. This is going to be terrible. This is going to be awful. I've told this before, but there was one time last December that I went outside to put the chickens up. It was cold. I had shorts and t-shirt on. I get outside and I start to get a chill. You know, I feel it's like, I have a fever. And I turn around and walk back. And by the time I got back to the house, I was thinking through my life insurance policy. You know, like a rabbit hole is a dangerous game to play. The hypotheticals are dangerous. I went inside, took my temperature. It was fine. I sat inside and realized I had just gone out in December in shorts and t-shirt, and I was fine. Hypotheticals are a dangerous game to play. And what I often ground us on in hypotheticals is I invite people to curiously wonder, what are your knowns? What are your knowns? What do you know? Where do you, Sarah, plant your feet? Where is the rock on which you stand? And what we do know, very simply, is that we believe in a Jesus Christ who was born into this world with one mission, and that is to defeat death once and for all and to lead people to God. God's mission through Jesus Christ is to defeat death and lead us toward God. Paul wrote in 1 Thessalonians, I preach almost every funeral service with this text. It says in 1 Thessalonians, to a group of people who were grieving and wondering what was happening to their people who were dying, Paul wrote this, brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed. Uh, don't be ignorant. Don't be uninformed about those who fall asleep in death so that you do not so that you do not grieve like the rest of humankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. So we, we do not grieve as those who do not have hope because we have hope in that on which we have planted our feet Christ, the solid rock, we stand. That leads us into hope. C.S. Lewis uh, gave a fascinating image of the journey to heaven. It's one that I choose to live by, and I wonder if it might be helpful for you. I shared a few weeks ago and the, this idea of heaven being uh, golden gates and big palaces and fancy things and, and beautiful hymns, as beautiful as it is. I don't know if I want that 24-7, you know, that, and it was not engaging to me as a kid. Uh, and so I began, began to experience and learn and dig into some other ideas of heaven. This is what C.S. Lewis talks of heaven. He says, this life is but a preface, is but a preface for the life to come in which we will experience chapter after chapter after chapter. And he plays this out in his children's uh, series, The Chronicles of Narnia. The Chronicles of Narnia end in the last book, in the last chapter, after they've lived through all sorts of adventures, this preface uh, into what was understood to be the, the magical kingdom of heaven. Uh, and the main characters are walking along a meandering path. You're walking along a meandering path that leads up to a great big mountain. And Peter, the main character, says this. He says, I don't know what, where we are going, but I know, and I know that there is something beautiful on the top of that mountain. And I don't really care if we ever get there. This idea of heaven being a continued, perpetual love of God as our friend, uh, beckoning us along, joining us for the journey, loving us along the way. So that along the way we can experience true love and grace and testimony and forgiveness. So as the revelation says, I'll quote it later, but where there's no more sickness, no more dying, no more death, that this earth is made new and we have a perfect relationship with God so that we are perfected in love and we can see and hear and listen and taste and see all through God's eyes as, it, it, as if it is a new Eden. And likewise, he talks about hell uh, in a very creative way. The Peter and his friends are walking along the path and they come across a soldier 
a soldier that they knew from their first life. And the soldier was bent over in the fetal position, rocking back and forth, just muttering. And they wonder what is wrong with him, and somebody speaks up. He has turned so inward that he cannot see or hear or experience anything else. Isolation from God and people. And then they move on from that man casually uh, with the air that they are not worried, that they know eventually uh, that this great, they call it a magic power, we might call it Jesus, that Jesus would walk along and tap him on the shoulder and say, hey, come follow me, let me show you. It's a fairy tale, it's a story, uh, but it's rich, rich, rich in theology. I enjoy this idea of journey that never ends, that you never become sick. As my journeys are my happiest place. You know, whether it's backpacking or fishing or taking a, a simple ride around town on the golf cart uh, or going on a road trip, like adventure, like speaks to my soul. And it may not be for you, but this kingdom of heaven as a sense of adventure really connects to me. And this foretaste of what we may experience in heaven when we are transformed to see people with the eyes and ears and heart of God is what is to come. C.S. Lewis says later that what you believe about the afterlife, what you believe about the afterlife changes everything about how you live your life now. If you believe that there is an afterlife and it is perfect love, that you are willing to take risks here and now, you don't believe that this is the end and when we face death, the death of a family member, of a loved one or somebody you care about, you know it is only goodbye for now. It means that we work hard here in this life to transform this world by the power of the Spirit into this kingdom of heaven here and now, but we know Know that there is good, perfect life to come in heaven, but more so that our work here is not done in vain. Yeah, that Adam Hamilton says about heaven, not only do we believe in it, but we're counting on it. Not only do we passively believe on it, but we are counting on it in a way that helps us make sense of these crises of faith in the way that makes sense of our death and destruction and anxiety and fear and danger. We're counting on it. My favorite scriptures from the Methodist uh, Celebration of Life liturgy comes from Revelation. Hear this. Behold. God is dwelling in the human race. He will dwell with them and they will be his people and God himself will always be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes and there shall be no more death or mourning, no more wailing or pain for the old order has passed away. The new, the one who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new i'm the alpha the omega the beginning the end to the thirsty i'll give a gift of the spring of life giving water the victor the victor sarah the victor will inherit these gifts and i shall be his god and he will be my son the race has begun now and here and i wonder if you won't finish it strong As we have begun this race, as coming to church, professing Christ, baptized, whatever it is for you, we've begun the race and we do not run in vain, for we know that our hope is to come, this perfect place where there is no sickness, no more death, no more destruction, no more anger, no more dear Lord God, partisan politics and COVID and anger and frustration, no more but we only see in perfect love. That is to come, which can be experienced now if you turn your life to Jesus and invite the light that is our eternal hope into our hearts to transform us. Listen, listen, I'll tell you a mystery. We will not all die, but we will all be changed in a moment. In the twinkling of an eye, the sound of a trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and we will be changed. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? The sin of death is 
sting of death is sin, the power of sin is law, but thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, keep running. Not only do we believe it, friends, but we're counting on it. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Friends, as we come to the table, uh, we come with hearts desiring to run the race. We come uh, to taste and see that the Lord is good. It's at this table where all things are equal, all sins are washed away, all people are invited to taste and see that the Lord is good. The Lord is love. And that when we turn ourselves to God, when we taste and we ingest and we receive this, I don't know, maybe heaven feels a little more real. All are invited. doesn't matter who you are, whether you're a member, whether you're a visitor, whether you believe in Jesus, or whether you think it's the biggest scam that has ever been. All people are invited. All people who love Christ are along this journey that is the preface that will lead on to chapter to chapter. Confess of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Might we pray together our prayer of confession. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We confess our sins, Lord, the sins of commission, the sins of omission, the ways that we have strived. Lord, free us for joyful obedience, for joyful, joyful obedience to follow in your way through Jesus Christ, who is our Lord, we pray. Amen. Church, in the, in the name of Jesus, who was born into this world with one mission, to defeat death and to call us home, you are forgiven. Amen and amen. As a forgiven and reconciled people before God, might we offer signs of Christ's peace and reconciliation to one another. I might invite you to remain sitting and turn and offer a wave of Christ's peace to your neighbors. Now let us join together in the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And all. To give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God, God of power, power and might. Heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. Delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the spirit. A church on the night when Jesus gave himself up for us, he gathered his friends together in what would have been a very familiar meal, the Passover, and yet this one took a very different turn. When they got to the blessing of the bread, he took the bread and he broke it and he offered it to his friends and he said, take and eat this, all of you. This is my body which is broken out of love for you. And then he took the cup, the last cup of the covenant, uh, and he took it and he gave it to all of his friends. And he said, drink this, all of you, as often as you drink of it in memory of me, as you remember and know 
that this is my blood, my very life source given for you, that you might have forgiveness of sins, power over your hurts, your hang-ups, your habits, and freedom to live in joyful obedience through Jesus Christ. And so today, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts through Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and as a living sacrifice in union with Christ offering to us as we proclaim that mystery, which is our faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body of Christ that we might receive this and be transformed to the world. And Lord, until we come together in one, we pray that uh, Christ would lead us to final victory. And as we feast at his heavenly ban banquet, through your Son, Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. 21 years. As we come to receive this uh, gift, this sacrament, this means of grace, this sustenance for the journey, I invite you to come. We'll receive in a, a slightly different way. Sarah and I are going to put a mask on and we're going to put gloves on and I've got tongs to offer you a piece of uh, Jesus' body. Uh, and then Sarah or, and, uh, will offer you a, a cup. And you'll consume it together. Uh, if you're uncomfortable with that, I've got some of the, what my friends call Jesus Lunchables up here. Um, and you can, I'll, I'll set a few of them on the altar here. Feel free to take that uh, if you feel more comfortable. And I touched that one, so I'm going to set it back here. Uh, as we prepare, if you would come, like, as a family unit, try and keep maybe six feet between your family units would be great. Uh, we've got plenty of time. Uh, come and taste and see oh, that the Lord is so good. Oh, sorry, Sarah.
Amen. I promised Leanne that we could sing the last song, even if it ran long. Uh, so we're going to sing uh, Victory in Jesus. Let's all stand together and uh, sing this in our hearts, whispers, you know the deal. Uh, Victory in Jesus. A good old Baptist tune. Let's sing together. A mystery. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is law. But thanks be to God who gives us what? Victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Church, go today in victory. Amen and amen. Amen. <laughs>